Hello and welcome to yet another video of Tracking the Changes, a series of videos that shows you what's new, what's different and what's changing across the digital domain and the real world and how to synthesize the two in order to gain a competitive advantage for your business and arguably your life. Many of you emailed me last week asking about predictability and the future, asking about what's going to happen in the future ahead like I would have a crystal ball and also asking questions about uncertainty. And I understand your fears, I understand your concerns, and essentially they're correct. Every business is designed to try and look ahead in order to predict customer behavior, customer journeys in the months ahead and better plan its own activities. And from an evolutionary point of view, our brains have been designed to be predictive machines. We take in a lot of information from all the different sources and we synthesize that information in our head in order for our brain to basically predict the next possible moment. And the reason it does that, the reason it's been designed to do that is so it can help us survive by seeing opportunities and avoiding threats. All this so far so good, but how do we apply it in real life in the current setting which we're facing, which is admittedly unprecedented by any standard. Last year was a disaster for many people and many businesses, and this year appears to be no different, even though there is distinct hope in sight. Now, what I will do is I will give you a process which you can apply, then make that process fit into your current situation and how your business works and go from there. Now here's what we do know which we can be confident about. We know that any kind of disease, and this disease is no exception, requires a human vector in order to propagate. We know that if we all stood still, absolutely still without moving anywhere for the next 14 days, in all likelihood the pandemic would be over. We know we can't because human behavior is complex, complicated, multifaceted, and we don't always obey the rules. As a result, this pandemic will continue for some time this year until the vaccines create some kind of barrier which slows down the spread and allows us to manage it better. So these things we actually know. We know that any vaccination in place is facing logistical problems because it's unprecedented in size. And this is pure physics again. How do we produce enough of something and get it to sufficient number of people very quickly? So in other words, we know there's a time scale between now and the point where we can say, oh, we have a degree of safety. And a time scale is anything between uh, June, July, August and September. So we're looking at the first nine months of the year being equally uncertain with quite a lot of difficulty in terms of consumer behavior. And then we also have to factor in the things which we don't quite know, but we suspect. We suspect that the current pandemic and the measures that have been put in place by governments across the globe have affected businesses. Some of these businesses have closed down. This has created gaps in the economy. This has probably created gaps in consumer buying power, which we don't quite see just yet. These things will reveal themselves as we move forward. It's pretty bleak so far and I admit that. So we know all this as, as we sort of begin to plan, we need to take into account. But here's the upside of all this. It's a change in the status quo and every time there's a change like that, because nature as well as businesses abhor a, vac a vacuum, we know that there are going to be opportunities. The businesses which will take advantage of those opportunities are the ones which survive the current situation by hunkering down um, being very conservative in, what, in their activities by making decisions which allow them to survive the next month and the next month and the next month until the end of the year. And then automatically, because there'll be uh, fewer businesses around of a similar type and it'll be different for each business. I mean, restaurants and cinemas and hairdressers and gyms, for example, will each be as an industry sector in a different situation. So essentially, um, those that survive will automatically get a slightly bigger pie, uh, slice of the pie. And at the same time, the change in the status quo will energize the markets as new businesses, new ideas develop, and that will create new opportunities. So that's the dynamic. These are the physics. These are the things which we actually know. Take these on board. Understand that consumer behavior is going to change. Understand that the decisions rather the criteria we use in order to make decisions is going to change because our perception of values and what is important to us is already changed. Factor in that will be an energizing or energetic approach to the markets from the end of the year onwards for at least 
the next 24 months. So we're looking at 2022 and 2023 and begin to, to think, synthesize all that and begin to think, what can you do to help you survive this year, help you improve your approach to next year so that you're, so that you're reflective of the changes that are happening to your audience and how you can then better position yourself so that you can do more business faster in the years ahead. I really hope this helps. I really hope this approach which I just gave you is something which you can put into use very quickly. Stay the course, stay strong, stay safe. Thank you.